Hey guys, Aston here again with Gen Sense. Standing up this time, we're going to be taking a look at a new 2016 release in New York by Van Cleef and Arpels. So everybody loves Midnight in Paris, or a good amount of people love Midnight in Paris. So this one started to get a little bit of hype uh, before it came out, but it's really not readily available. So I don't really see anybody talking about it. I went ahead and ordered a bottle from France. That way I could take a look at it and see if it's worth getting hyped up about. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the presentation of the box and bottle. Obviously not as nice as Midnight in Paris, but what are you gonna do? And we'll go ahead and check out the fragrance itself. Let's go ahead and check out the presentation for Van Cleef and Arpels in New York. On this side of the box you have uh, what almost looks like a small bit of a skyline. Uh, you have the size and concentration here at the bottom. Nothing on the side. And on the back here, it just says Van Cleef and Arpels Hot Perfumery. And then on the bottom, you have your typical information with ingredients, uh, badge code, etc. Also have Van Cleef and Arpels insignia on the top of the box. Now the bottle is very kind of modern and minimal. It says Van Cleef and Arpels in New York on the front. And then you have this little metal band that goes down either side. You can see it's like a thick glass just cut into basically a square shape. Uh, you have kind of a rubber feel on the top. Now the cap does click into place, but it's not the sturdiest. I wouldn't pick it up by the cap. You see here on the cap, VCA. You can kind of see it there. On the bottom, it's really similar to what you'll see on the bottom of Midnight in Paris. Um, and then the atomizer is pretty good. It gets the job done. Not amazing, it's not a Dior, but it's not bad. That's the presentation for Van Cleef and Arpels in New York. This starts off with a really nice orange lemon blast. They kind of mix together, so you can't necessarily pick one out more than the other, but they're both obviously there. And it's nice, it's pleasant but it's been done before. It's not something groundbreaking. Uh, you start to get kind of an aquatic feel that comes in, aquatic notes, uh, but it's not an aqua scent. You just get the feel of those aquatic notes. It never takes over and honestly isn't really a dominant force in the fragrance. As it starts to hit the mid, as you start to dry down just a little bit, you start to get a fresh lavender that sits in the back of the fragrance and then comes to the front. And it's a fresh lavender. This isn't something that's like uh, an old school 80s lavender or barbershop lavender or anything like that. This is the modern fresh lavender that everybody can enjoy. At some point in the dry down, this starts to smell like Blue de Chanel. Now this isn't a Blue de Chanel clone at all. It's in the same ballpark. Uh, but it's definitely not a clone, so don't get that twisted. It's just at some point during the dry down, it starts to take on a very Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette feel. Uh, it's a couple hours in, and it lasts for a little while, uh, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and then it kind of changes again. But at some point during the transition in this fragrance, it starts to give a Blue de Chanel vibe and it's a pretty strong one. Once you hit the dry down, you get more musk that comes out and you get a little bit of tonka. It doesn't really go sweet. It never turns into a, a sweet fragrance. It stays more aromatic, but those notes come to the fore once you hit the full dry down. It's still nice, it's still pleasant, um, but it has been done before. So this commits a cardinal sin of the fragrance community. If you haven't picked up on what that is, it's that it's kind of generic. It's not really anything new. It smells nice. It smells pleasant. I don't dislike the scent. It's just, uh, it's just there, you know? It's like Dylan Blue. It's like Mr. Burberry. It's not as bad as what I think people will ultimately make it out to be, but it's also not great. It's just good. And the problem there is right now, this is going for pretty much full retail everywhere. Uh, so there's really no reason to buy it. Even if you were just an average Joe, like a, an everyday guy trying to get a versatile fragrance um, for how much you'd have to pay to pick this up, there are options out there at a third of the price that will get the job done and better. So it's, uh, it's probably not gonna be super successful if I had to, uh, if I had to make a guess.
It, like I said, doesn't smell bad. It just doesn't do anything new. It doesn't push the envelope and that's going to get it some negative marks from people in the community at large. So can I recommend this? Honestly, at this price, I can't. Um, if you think of Azaro Wanted, if you've smelled that, um, you're probably dealing with close to the same kind of quality there. Maybe this one is a little bit higher, uh, but it's not that far off. So if I was going to say, you know, $85 or however much this is for retail right now to pay that much, I think n no way. You'd be better off going with the Dior or Chanel. Um, if this goes down to like $20, $25, then yeah, go ahead and pick it up. But honestly, that's probably not going to happen for a while. And uh, just with how many versatile fragrances there are out there, how many versatile people pleaser type colognes are out there, this one is ultimately going to get lost in the shuffle. It doesn't really have anything that sets it apart. The bottle is uh, decent modern looking, but it doesn't really pop. Uh, the fragrance also doesn't really pop. It's pleasant, but it's been done before. So it is what it is, Fan Cleef and Arpels in New York. It is kind of what a lot of people feared. It's just kind of generic. It's not bad, but it's definitely not great. Uh, it's one that I imagine a lot of people will say they like and that it's okay, but I don't imagine too many people are going to be coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, in New York is a masterpiece, it's amazing. Unfortunately, it just isn't. Midnight in Paris is a higher quality fragrance. I know it's a completely different fragrance, but it's higher quality and you can pick it up for under 20 bucks. This is from the same brand, of course, but the quality is not the same and the cost is like four or five times more. All right, guys, let me know if you have smelled in New York. Let me know what you think about it. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time.